Hey guys, and welcome to the latest episode of r slash short scary stories, where I read out some of the best short scary stories on the subreddit and give them a rating, and you guys berate me on those ratings and tell me that I'm wrong, which is fun. Yes, fun. Anyway, getting straight into the video, the first story is called The Life of a Torso Child, and this is submitted by user you shall not pass one to one. Love Lord of the Rings. My parents were pretty charitable. Always wanting to make a difference. Always wanting to fix everything and everyone. So when they brought my adopted brother home, I understood completely and I didn't complain. Despite his disturbing appearance, he sort of made you recoil and do a double take when you looked at him. No one wanted him, they would say. And to be honest, I wasn't surprised. They said he was found on the streets like that, and no one knew what happened to him or why he looked the way he did. It was truly grotesque, but after a while, he kind of got used to it. If anything, I felt tremendous pity. Abhorrence mixed with pity, you could say. That poor guy. I'd sit and think as I stared at his dismal frame. What was left of it, that is. You see, my new brother was nothing but a torso. He had no arms, no legs, and his mouth was sewn shut. Have you ever heard anything more sickening? Anything more detestable than a little boy who's got nothing but a torso? I can't say that I have. His stumps were adorned by deep, thick scar tissue. They looked like they had been cauterized. I found it hard to bond with him. How do you bond with someone who doesn't have a mouth? The poor guy had to be fed through a tube. I didn't even want to know how he did toilet the things. The thought made me shudder. A thick, putrid lump of bile would rise in my throat as I watched my parents try and give him some sort of quality of life. The strange thing was, though, when I'd catch him looking at me, his eyes would be vacant devoid of any and all emotion. I guess it was understandable. One night, I woke up to a peculiar sound, a kind of awkward smacking of lips. It was coming from my brother's room. I never liked being around him alone, so I rushed to get my parents, but when I went into their room, I found the bed empty. I made my way to my brother's room, albeit slowly. Admittedly, I was scared. As I neared, I heard the sounds of wet slurping, the sound someone makes when they're finishing a milkshake. When I opened the door, I found my brother squirming and writhing through an endless pool of blood and poo. I saw the corpses of my parents, their innards crudely ripped out by a set of razor-sharp teeth. The face of my brother was manic, deranged. The sutures that lined his mouth were ripped off awkwardly. I couldn't comprehend how. He looked up as he saw me, a wise smile spread across his bloodied face. When he spoke, his voice was so guttural, completely unlike the voice of a child. I can be whole again, he said. Okay, so that was, uh, that was pretty, uh, pretty mad <laughs> that was that was crazy um so yeah i thought the story was going to go down the route of how we'd been tortured but okay yeah that's that's not scary at all is it no nope, not at all um <laughs> imagine being killed by someone that doesn't have any arms or legs man there's no wonder his mouth was sewn shut how does someone like that get into the system to be adopted anyway? I mean, I'm I'm going to give this a 4 out of 5 because the, the that got pretty scary at the end. Um and yeah, obviously I I don't do it just this when I uh, read the uh the speech that he said at the end. I tried my best, but when I read it, um it, it sent shivers. So that's getting a 4 out of 5 from me. 
So the next short scary story is by user Grand Theft Motto. The story is called Ballerina in a Box. When I was much younger, I knew a girl whose only dream was to be a ballerina. She practiced every morning and every evening, stretching and leaping and flowing around the room like, like a river through a forest. And always, she danced to the same tune that came from the music box she carried with her. Inside the box was a tiny ballerina figurine, and it danced along with the girl whenever the song played. That damn box. I hated it. The way it seemed to always push her too hard. I would watch her some days when she came over to my house after school. The girl and I were neighbours and friends. I loved her with the secret. Absolute love you give your first crush. She'd invite me to dance with her, but I was too nervous. Too aware of the clumsy geometry of my steps. When the girl danced, it was like she was running. Whether she was chasing after something or being chased, I never did find out. When we were in high school, the girl danced in the auditorium. It was a talent contest and she was perfect that night. The ebb and flow of her, the way her shadow swept the stage clean, was a mad miracle. I don't know how her body held together the heat of her. This graceful friction. Everyone in the room held one shared breath. And then, someone sped up her music. A practical joke at her expense. But for a while, somehow, she kept up with it. Faster, faster, wind lashing off of the girl as she raced after the quickening song. For a moment, it seemed like she might even catch it. Then a stumble, a very human fall, and the spell was broken. People laughed to relieve the tension. I didn't. It must have hurt. Each cackle, a hook set to skin, then ripped away. After that day, she was different. The girl became obsessed with perfection. Every waking moment spent practicing. I saw her less and less, and every time I did, she was dancing, chasing the song from her music box again, or being chased by it. A human body can survive for three weeks without food. The girl made it 16 days. All of the dancing burned her away early. So many of the same people that laughed at her fall cried at her funeral. I didn't. I was too numb. But at least in death, she could finally rest. Or so I thought. Last night, the tears finally came. I decided to visit the girl's grave. When I arrived, I could hear a faint sound drifting up from the fresh earth. Two sounds. The first was the muted rasp of the music box. The second was the slow, clumsy thump of something buried trying to return. Oh! Okay, so that went from, uh, it's a ballerina in a box, not really my kind of thing, to, uh, oh, it got deep, it got deep, really. Really quick and then creepy at the end. Um, so yeah, that was that was tragic and also um, yeah, also quite spooky at the end. So I really like the uh, the line: "So many of the same people that laughed at her fall cried at her funeral." I think that's really relevant to sort of life in general. A lot of people like to see you get put down, but then if you end up tragically losing your life they're the first ones to, to talk about how, how sad they are and and it, it's just kind of snaky but anyway I'll give this one another four um, I definitely didn't think it was one for me but then the ending creeped me out a little bit so uh, it's either a three or a four spooky bookie I think I'll give it a 3.5 um, but yeah very very well written uh, it was quite easy to read. So props to Grand Theft Motto for this story. Our next story is by Reddit user True System Lord. And the story is Fireworks. On the 17th of September, at exactly 9pm, a massive fireworks shot into the sky above London. 
lighting up the surrounding area for a few short seconds. The firework took the shape of the number 5, visible for miles around. Not much was thought about it, and the world continued as usual. On the 18th of September, at exactly 9pm, a giant firework in the shape of a number 4 filled the sky, shooting up from a different part of the city. There were a few musings amongst people in the city as to what they were, not much else was thought. On the 19th of September, at 9pm, from a different point, a number 3 shot up. After receiving multiple calls, local police began looking into it, trying to locate the places where the fireworks were fired from. But as far as they could tell, all the areas they originated from had no leads. Local news began talking about the numbers and speculating as to what it was counting down to. On the 20th of September, the police put out a request for the public information. No useful details come forward. Doomsday prophets claim it is counting down to the rapture. National news discusses the strange events. Theories begin circulating. Most believe it to be a trick. A number two firework appears in a random part of the sky at 9pm. On the 21st of September, by the time the number one firework bursts into the sky, theories are rampant about what it means. Everyone's waiting for the following day with bated breath. Some panic begins to spread. Uncertainty is prevalent. Police are searching desperately for the cause to no avail. On the 22nd of September, all eyes look to the sky at 8.59pm, waiting to see what the previous days had all led to. At exactly 9, a large flash filled the sky. Instead of taking the shape of a number, this flash grew, larger and larger. The image of the initial blast burned itself into everyone's eyes. The shockwave that followed annihilated everything in its path, bringing down buildings and disintegrating every person in its path. There was no number in the sky, just a mushroom cloud stretching high into the atmosphere, leaving a crater where the city used to be. On the 23rd of September, a firework in the shape of a number 5 lit up the sky above Washington DC. The world fell into chaos and panic. I actually really enjoyed that one. Um, I don't want 2020 to have any more uh, scary world-ending things happen, though. I mean, we've already had Australia being on fire. We've, we've had uh, the uh, the lockdown globally. Um, we won't mention the name because I've heard that it, it ruins the algorithm on YouTube. Not that I get a lot of views anyway, but I don't want to ruin my chances. Um... And given this is in a month's time, um, please don't happen. So I'm going to give that one a 3 out of 5 Spooky Wookies. It was a very good story, um, and it is filled with, with death and destruction. And to be fair, it's pretty relevant given we've got a month to wait, so I'll be thinking about this when we hit uh, September 17th. So I'm going to bump that up to a 4 out of 5 Spooky Wookies now. So, thank you for listening to these short, scary stories. All the links to the stories will be in the description down below, so if you want to check them out and read them and see if you find anything that I missed, maybe think that I'm wrong in what I'm thinking on some of these, um, go have a look. Don't hesitate to comment down below. Any feedback, suggestions, that'd be great. We're recording the podcast tomorrow, so today is... Uh, the 22nd will be recording it on the 23rd and hopefully on the 24th I will uh, I'll have that all edited and up so uh, yeah thanks for listening and take care